sea rings of cartilage. But by the time you branch into the bronchi on each side, the bronchi and the, the, the primary, secondary, and the bronchioles, no longer are we looking at sea rings of cartilage, but these are rings that wrap all the way around. They're like O rings of cartilage. So no longer do we need to accommodate for food passing through the esophagus. Now we need these passageways to stand open all the time, just like this coordinated pipe from the hardware store. So by the time you reach those bronchial passageways, we will start to, to miss those little tiny um, rings of cartilage because at that point we're looking at about a millimeter or less in diameter and you know we're looking at an alveolar air sac being attached to that bronchial tube. Since we're talking about ciliated epithelium here, I want to mention to you smoking because what smoking does is it kills off those cilia, it essentially burns them off. So a person has no natural mechanism to remove that cilia from the lungs or remove that contaminated mucus rubber from the lungs. So a natural smoker's cough will develop when, the, when people smoke. Good news is if you stop smoking, the cilia will burn back. The lung tissue will turn from pink or rather from black into pink, but it takes years for that process to change over. So, the um, simple squat can repair itself, so it's not a, my, a, my, a mycotic, but scar tissue can form if there's enough damage. You know, the, 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 air sac. the air sac, they can actually, um, they can repair it's themselves to an extent, but it's not just a simple squamous, there's elastic tissue that allows for the expansion and contraction, that can also become damaged, and yeah, that can form scar tissue. And that instead of having negative air pressure inside and the lungs staying inflated, somehow there's been air introduced into the chlora, you know, the chlora around the outside. <coughs> so air introduced there makes the pressure change and the lung actually collapses. If you can do whatever it is, that maybe it's a stabbing or something of that sort, maybe somebody had a um, pleurisy, if you can get rid of whatever the cause is, then the lung can reinflate. Just wanted to show you a couple of other pictures here. You can see how everything's situated. You can see here's a sneak peek of the <coughs> aorta coming up. Back here, that piece right there is behind the trachea. That's going to be the esophagus. And here's another great view of how those C rings are situated on the trachea. And you can see the esophagus back behind. That's, of course, why we don't have the rings pass all the way around because we want to be able to accommodate for food passing down through that esophagus. I also wanted to mention a tracheotomy to you before we leave this stuff behind. Tracheotomy essentially introduces a bypass for the larynx, so if there's something that's blocking the larynx from being an open passageway, a tracheotomy tube essentially inserts a breathing opening down lower, below the mm -hmm. um, larynx. Sometimes people have larynx cancer or cancer somewhere in that area and that whole structure <coughs> has to be removed, and so a tracheotomy tube is one way that they can still breathe. This can be done by pretty much anybody, but oh beware, because there's so many blood vessels here on each side of the neck that if you do a tracheotomy with a sharp <laughs> blade, you can actually get bleeding introduced into that little hole, and then the person can drown in their own blood. So that's the real serious problem with having just any run-of-the-mill person do a tracheotomy on you. But, but if they if they're can't breathe, you got to try it. you got to try it, right. you just got to hope that, that, that you don't catch the blood vessel there. Is it true you can do one of those with a pen? Would you have turned out this? I imagine you could. So you someone mm -hmm. told me that um, guy was choking and at a restaurant, and there was a well doctor gave him a trick out of me with a pen and opened up his wing away and that same guy screwed him. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Saved his life in there? Yeah. Okay. And one of good. Really? Um, which one? I assume if you can catch between those um, cartilage rings, you probably can do it with a pen or a dinner knife or anything else. So take a drink and straw and shove it in. You did it with a, a knife from the restaurant table and a uh, knife real fast. Wow. Wow. And then get food for it. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Yeah, because the Good Samaritan law doesn't protect them. That's right. That's right. It's scary, you know. Why would you do something like that? Oh, but it's so. I mean. This is funny. I thought we were doing our house one time. It don't take them long to do it. No. It takes like two, three minutes. Yeah. And we'll do the other. Cut and sort of draw. There you go. Yeah. Okay.
to just wanted to give you a flashback to Bio 210 for just a moment, which I know is a great thing to have a flashback, right? So here you go with the pseudostratified <coughs> ciliated epithelial tissue, and that's what lines the trachea down into the bronchial passageways as well. Okay. That takes me to the bottom of page 75. Let's see, we got about four minutes left. Let me see what we can do with uh, alveoli on top of page 76. <coughs> and then we'll call it a day. So here you get the, the big picture. You can see that the lungs are, of course, going to be accommodating this passageway of air down into the um, trachea to the bronchi, bronchial tube passageways. Eventually what we do is we <coughs> we end in these little teeny tiny structures called bronchioles. <coughs> See, there we go, slim, right? And these little tiny bronchioles have these little air clusters, air sacs clustered around the end. A lot of people say these look like grape clusters, and in fact they do. These alveolar air sacs <coughs> are the site of gas exchange in the lung. So on that very first slide that I showed you, one of the things was mentioning external gas exchange or external respiration. The process of exchanging gases with the outside world does occur at the alveolar air sac. Here again is a trip back to Bio 210. What type of tissue forms those alveolar air sacs? Good, simple squamous epithelial tissue. How many layers thick is that? One. Very thin, that's one layer. That is built for diffusion of gases across that very simple cell layer. So you can see here that the alveolus is built for gas exchange. Okay, let me talk to you a little bit about surfactants. In those um, alveolar air sacs, there are specialized cells embedded among the simple squamous tissue. You'll notice on your worksheet, page 76, about halfway <coughs> down, surfactant is mentioned. Surfactant is produced by these type 2 cells that make this lipid-like substance. It's almost like secreting an oily substance on the inside surface of your lung. The reason that surfactant is there is to keep those alveolar air, alveolar air sacs from sticking together during breathing, so it makes them essentially stay open and not have the tissue stick together. And babies who are born premature, one of the last things to form is the secretion of that surfactant. So if the baby is born too early, the air alveolar air sacs may in fact stick together, preventing you know, breathing issues or causing breathing issues rather, getting that air down there into the lung. So surfactant is meant to prevent the lung from collapsing because those alveolar air sacs really don't need to stick to one another. I also wanted to mention to you the bullet point below surfactant. It talks there about alveolar macrophages. What is a macrophage? An eating cell. So these alveolar macrophages are on the patrol in those air sacs. By the time you reach the air sac, we no longer have cilia. So we no longer are sweeping out the contaminated stuff. Now we rely on our own immune system to patrol and eat anything that may cause us damage. So by the time you reach the alveolar air sac, we have essentially gotten rid of no more cartilage, okay, no more cilia, so now we're working on these elastic, stretchy air sacs with those macrophages. So that's how we essentially clean up the job down there. This looks like a good place to stop. Why don't we start here with lungs on Tuesday, and then we'll work through some physiology info as well. Now, any questions for today? The base is good.